Today, I'm going to talk about something that females are almost too good at, and that is lying. Because the average woman has a much higher social aptitude and is much more perceptive than the average man, they're far more adept at social manipulation. They're very good at misleading and lying to people. Women lie to everyone, guys. They lie to their family, their friends, their coworkers, their bosses, their children, and even themselves. But the vast majority of a woman's lies are reserved for their husbands and boyfriends. Now, females lie to their husbands and boyfriends for a few reasons. They lie about their notch counts to make themselves look less promiscuous than they really are. They lie about how their last relationship ended to absolve themselves of any and all responsibility, which really means they cheated their way out of the relationship. The list goes on and on. But the main reason females lie to their boyfriends and husbands is to cover up cheating. Yes, there are many different lies, many different reasons for those lies, and many different times they lie. But the number one reason women lie to their significant others is to cover up infidelity. Unfortunately, most men out here lack even a basic understanding in terms of knowing when they're being lied to by a woman. They think they know when their women are lying to them because maybe she stutters or she looks away when speaking to them. And while these could be signs she's being dishonest, it doesn't even begin to scratch the surface because females are expert liars and professional cheaters. You think she doesn't know that stuttering and looking away gives her away as a liar? Here's a better question. You think she doesn't do these things on purpose to make you think she's lying? Let that sit for a while. Understand this, gentlemen. Women are always four steps ahead. They've been lying and cheating about lying and cheating since they figured out that men want to sleep with them. And that starts as early as 14, 15 years old, and sometimes even younger than that. My ex-girlfriend, Amy, is a great example having had her first child at 13. I met her six years later, but I didn't run for the hills when I found out she had a six-year-old kid at just 19. Admittedly, that one was on me. Anyway, so now a man asks himself, well, how can I get better at recognizing when a woman is being dishonest with me? How can I become more proficient at spotting lies? Well, the first thing I'll tell you is that it takes a lot of time and a lot of experience to be able to know when a woman is lying to you. The reason I'm great at spotting dishonesty is because I've been lied to by a lot of women in a lot of ways over the years. Experience, as they say, is the best teacher. Lying is no different. But to shorten your learning curve, there are a few steps you can take. And the biggest step you can take is to pay attention from the beginning. What I mean by this is pay attention to her mannerisms, her body language, her voice inflections, and her verbal cadence from your very first interaction with her. Watch her eyes, her mouth, and her micro expressions when she's talking to you. You need to pay attention to all of these things when you know she's being honest with you. Now, these are going to be things that seem inconsequential, things she doesn't have to lie about. For example, when she says, I really like this apple teeny, pay attention. When she talks about what kind of shampoo she uses because you said her hair smelled interesting, pay attention. When you ask her about her family and friends, pay attention. Now, the reason this is so important is because this gives you what FBI interrogators call a baseline. When she answers questions she has no need to lie about, her voice inflections, her cadence, her body language, and her facial expressions give you that important baseline. You know what she looks, sounds, and moves like when she's telling the truth. This is why FBI interrogators ask basic questions in the beginning of a lie detector test. They ask you questions like, what's your name? Where were you born? What are your siblings' name? And so forth. This way, when they administer the questions they really want the answers to, they are more likely to detect inconsistencies in your voice inflections, your body language, and your tone. They go one step further and hook you up to a machine that tracks your pulse and your vital signs. Then they compare all of this information to your baseline, which they established in the beginning when asking questions they know you'll tell the truth about. Now, obviously, you're not going to hook a woman up to an EKG machine or a heart monitor, but you can do the next best thing, which is to pay attention from the beginning. Most men today are so caught up in the bedroom fun and the emotion and all of those dopamine hits that comes with the newness of a relationship that they sleepwalk through the first few weeks and miss that critical baseline information that can be used later on when she tries to be honest with you. Guys always ask themselves the same thing when they find out their woman's been running around on them. How did I not see she was lying to me? How could I miss this? There are many answers to this question, but the number one reason is that he didn't pay attention and establish a baseline from his very first interaction with her. While this first step is important, it's only the beginning. You have to be able to use this information later on when and if she ever tries to lie to you. And there are many ways to pick up on these things rather easily, provided you've done what's necessary to prepare yourself. Now, I'm not going to go over every single solitary sign your woman is lying to you because we'd be here till Woman Ease Volume 3 drops. But I am going to give you seven extremely deceptive ways to tell your girlfriend or wife 
is lying to you, specifically about potential infidelity, which encompasses everything from her whereabouts to who she's with to what she's doing. Okay, so let's get started here. Seven deceptive ways women lie and how to spot them. Number one, her story sound rehearsed. This is where paying attention and establishing that baseline I talked about earlier comes in handy. If you ask her how her day was and she says something like, work was same old, same old. Kevin in the sales department got on my nerves, but he got off early so I didn't have to deal with him anymore. I went to lunch with Carol and I had a Cobb salad. She had a chicken quesadilla with sour cream on the side and a Coke with lime in it. The traffic sucked, but I listened to the Girls Today podcast for about 48 minutes, so that helped pass the time, and now I'm here with you, hot stuff. Now, if this is the way she usually describes her day, cool. There are some women out there that give you every single detail every single time, but most women don't give this much detail. And if this is out of the ordinary, and let's be honest, it is, it's because she rehearsed it, meaning that's not how her day went. A good way to find out for sure is to ask her again later on, and if she uses the exact same wording, meaning she tells you about the Cobb salad, the chicken quesadilla with sour cream, and Kevin and Sales getting off work early, they were definitely rehearsed. Well, wait a minute, Donovan. If she gives you the exact same details, wouldn't that mean she's telling the truth? Absolutely not, and here's why. If you ask someone the same question two different times, they'll give you the same answer, but they never use the same words or details verbatim. Women always tell on themselves when they give you exactly the same story verbatim. But most guys don't realize she's lying because he thinks, okay, she gave me the exact same story so she must be telling me the truth. Another way to know if she's rehearsed her lines is if her enunciations and voice cadence are different from what they normally are in her baseline. Again, guys, this is where paying attention comes into play. Number two, she repeats what she says to emphasize the lie. Let me give you a quick scenario here. Let's say you ask your girl, did you and Lisa have fun at the mall? And let's say she answers, yeah, we definitely did. We went to Forever 21 and spent way too much money, but it was totally worth it. We ate at this Chinese place in the food court and ended up at Macy's. We spent so much money at Forever 21, but it was so worth it. We were there for so long, we had to get out of there before we spent our entire paychecks. In this example, your girl wants you to believe that the reason she took so long is because her and Lisa spent a lot of time at Forever 21. The reason she wants to drive this point home is to reassure you that she wasn't getting plowed by Dave, the unemployed garage band guitar player, who may or may not have an illegitimate kid with his ex-girlfriend's mother, so she mentions it multiple times thinking that repeating it over and over will convince you it's true. If she repeats something in her story at least once, she's definitely covering something up. And by something, I mean getting pounded out by Dave. Number three, she quote unquote, hates someone so much. Let's go back to that first example when your girlfriend told you that Kevin was getting on her nerves. The reason she does this is to throw you off the scent. She wants you to think, man, she really hates that a-hole Kevin, so you will have no idea that she wants to sleep with him or is sleeping with him. Gentlemen, you need to listen very carefully when your woman talks about a man she can't stand. I can't stand Justin at the coffee shop. Tommy is such an a-hole. This creepy guy at my job looks like a pervert. These are the musings of a female with wet panties, and she's trying to convince you there's no way she'd ever do anything with these guys. But the more a woman talks about how much she doesn't want to hook up with him, the more she indeed wants to hook up with him. He's too short. He's married. He's ugly. Guys, none of that matters. She thinks enough of this guy to mention him to you multiple times. Besides, how does she know Kevin left work early if he's in another department? Which leads me to number four. She gets irritated when you quiz her on the details. So let's say you ask your girl, well, how do you know Kevin left early? And she responds with, that's a silly question. We work at the same company. Then you follow up with, yeah, but he works in the sales department and you work in accounting. That's on the other side of the building. If she gets irritated and responds with something like, Donovan, we work for the same company. Everybody knows when everybody gets off that she is definitely hiding something. If she gets pissed off, upset, or irritated when you ask for more information, she is 745% lying about something, at which point you need to quiz her hard for more information. And I'll tell you a quick personal story. I was dating this beautiful Ukrainian girl when I lived in Vegas. Her name was Tatiana. She had a long platinum blonde hair and the most gorgeous steely light blue eyes I've ever seen in my life. Anyway, we dated for a little over six months. And one evening I video called her because that's what we always did when we didn't spend the night with each other. Well, this one particular night, it took her a little longer than it should have for her to answer. And when she did, she was on her balcony, somewhere she had never answered a video call from me before. What's more is that she was just closing her back door to her balcony when she picked up. 
So that told me she did not want to take the call inside. I immediately got suspicious and asked her why she took the call from her balcony. She told me because she wanted to smoke a cigarette. Now, even though she smoked like a chimney, I didn't believe her. So I told her to put the cigarette out and go back inside to talk to me. She said, you're starting to irritate me. I said, I don't care. Put out the cigarette and go back inside. She said, why? I said, because I think you've got someone in your apartment and you don't want him to know you're talking to me. She said, don't be ridiculous. There's no one in my apartment. So I said, prove it. So she angrily puts out her cigarette and went back into her apartment, but just inside the back door. I said, tell me you love me. She said quietly, I love you. I paused for a minute because I didn't expect her to actually say it. It didn't hit me that she had whispered it yet. So she took that opportunity to say with an attitude, what? As if to imply that she had just proved her innocence. I said, walk into your living room and say it louder. She hung up and blocked my number. Long story short, I thought I was her boyfriend, but the entire time I was the side dude. She was cheating on her boyfriend with me for more than six months. The point is that she started to get irritated when I quizzed her on the details and pressed her on her to prove she wasn't lying, which is always a telltale sign she's up to no good. Number five, her alibi is too specific. This is what happens when your suspicions are too high not to remain silent. You don't want to be the guy who's asking your woman, where were you, who were you with, and what were you doing? Now, if you vetted and trained her properly, you'll never have to do this. But because almost zero men vet and train properly, the urge to ask this question will hit them at some point. Now, when she's been sleeping with Dave, the unemployed garage band guitar player who may or may not have done amateur adult films, she'll know you're going to quiz her on her whereabouts because she had her phone off for the last three hours. She's already got her cover story memorized, and when she tells you, she'll be extremely detailed in her explanation. So when you ask her, where the hell have you been? She'll respond with, well, I left here at 3, I got to Lisa's at like 3.15, from there we went to the mall and went to Forever 21. We spent two hours there, then we got hungry and ate a Panda Express at the food court till like 5.30. After that, we went to Macy's and spent a half an hour there. I dropped her off at 6.15, and now I'm here. That's a BS alibi, guys. That detail, the timeline, the exact times, all that is a dead giveaway that she's lying. Girls will also try to overcompensate by giving very little detail so their alibi sounds more believable. Unless she's BPD or Dark Triad, her cover story will either have too much or too little information. Like I said, you never have to memorize the truth. So if your girl's alibi is too detailed or not detailed enough, she is definitely lying. Number six, she makes too much eye contact when telling her story. Before my girlfriend started working for me, I used to ask her how her day was when she got home from the office. And when she told me, she rarely made eye contact with me because we were both doing other things. She's making dinner and is back and forth between the kitchen and the dining room, and I'd be on the couch playing Candy Crush trying to decompress after being on the air. This was our normal routine. When you and your girl are having standard conversations like, how was your day? There is little to no eye contact being made. But when she makes too much eye contact, she's trying to gauge a reaction to see if you're buying her story. So when she tells you the story about Kevin getting on her nerves and the Cobb salad with Carol and all the rest of that, and doesn't break eye contact, that is a major sign she's lying. Most girls give themselves away even more by maintaining eye contact to make sure you buy the story. The best way to handle this is to make expressions that make her think you don't believe her. Things like furrowing your brow or crossing your arms will make her nervous. When you do this, she'll get louder, more descriptive, and more panicky. She'll try harder and harder to convince you she's telling the truth. And when that happens, it becomes obvious to the both of you that she is not. Number seven, she uses honesty words. For example, honestly, or to be perfectly honest, or trust me. So your girl is making too much eye contact. Your face gives her the impression that you're not buying her story about Carol and her quesadilla, and she starts to panic. Well, she's not gonna break script and say, don't you believe me? Oh no. Instead, she'll involuntarily start using honesty words. So let's go through this again. So you ask her, how was your day? And she immediately locks eyes with you and starts her story. Work was same old, same old. Kevin got on my nerves, but he got off early so I didn't have to deal with him. Now, being aware of who and what Kevin is and how girls try to badmouth guys they really want to sleep with to give you the impression that he's not a threat, you furrow your brow and cross your arms. So now she starts to panic a little and continues. Trust me, I was so glad he left early. Anyway, I went to lunch with Carol and... Honestly, I wanted to get a burger, but I went with the salad so I could stay thin for you. Carol got a chicken quesadilla with sour cream and a Coke, and to be perfectly honest with you, I told her she needs to watch her diet if she wants to keep her boyfriend. At this point, you're not giving her any impression that you're buying her story, so she escalates more and continues. Trust me, Donovan, the traffic sucked, 
but I listened to the Girls Today podcast and that helped pass the time. And honestly, I'm so glad I'm here with you. The only time people use these words and phrases is if it's a verbal tick. I have several. For instance, I like to say, listen, or here's the thing and so forth. But Donovan, how do you know it's not a verbal tick with your woman? Easy. Pay attention and establish a baseline, which is exactly what I told you earlier. If you pick up on these verbal tics early on, fine, we all have them. But if all of a sudden she starts using honesty words and it's not something she normally does, she is 618% BSing you. When people are honest, they don't have to tell you they're being honest. It's that simple. So guys, what's the most diabolical way a woman's ever lied to you? And ladies, why do you... Never mind, you'll probably lie about that too, so keep your thoughts to yourself. Now, I've got three more bonus signs that are most definitely not safe for YouTube. So if you want to know what the last three deceptive ways women lie and how to spot them, become a patron now at patreon.com slash Donovan Sharp and get these bonus signs 